everybody in Norway, that's as bad as Facebook, isn't it? Eh? Everybody in Norway has usually got Facebook and they light a candle in the evening. Listen to Uncle Phil. Do this tonight and see if it works. You're desperately wanting to talk to somebody who's passed across the other side of life. Light your candle and ask them to make the flame go bigger. You will shit yourself when the flame gets big, trust me. And you'll think, oh my God, Uncle Phil's right. It's true what he's saying. And then find you yes, no answer. Find out which way is yes by asking the candle, and which way is no by asking the candle. And then you'll find you yes, no answer. And then you could start working with the spirit world. And the more you relax into it, the more the spirit world will come and talk with you. And for those people who say, oh my God, you must be living with dead people all the time, trust me, I ain't. This man here has promised to buy me a Bacardi and Coke tonight. And if you see me in Lillystrom, in a bar tonight, and come to talk to me about dead people, I will tell you, look, this is proper spirit. Because it's Bacardi. <laughs> Talking to a dead person is not proper spirit. It's gone 8 o'clock in the evening, so don't talk to me about any dead people. You have to be able to shut yourself off. <coughs> Otherwise, you burn yourself out. My dear, the lady with the watch on you, you've got your hand up to your mouth. Oslo is a very small place, and you can tell me to shut up whenever you want to, but there's been a man stood next to you all the time that I've been talking, and I can't talk no more about all this crap. Let's go on with some talk to some dead people. There's a man there who died very quickly, or very suddenly across the other side of life. He's on your father's side of the family, and you're looking very beautiful and very well. But that's not what I'm seeing. Since you've been sat there, there is so much healing going on with you, it's unbelievable. Your life over the last two and a half years hasn't been easy at all. And he's telling me he's so sorry. He wished he could have given you that fulfillment that you're still searching and looking for. And he's telling me here, your love life is going to become stronger when you start loving yourself. You're not loving... I love looking at people's love life. I'm telling you, you'll all want to do this job. You'll see who's having an affair. You'll see who's married. So before we go any further, let me ask you this question. Let's see how many people put their hand up today. How many people is having an affair with the lady's husband she sits next to today. So who's married Do you want me to ask you again? How many people is having an affair with the lady's husband she sits next to today? So are you having an affair with your best friend's husband that you sit next to? Nobody ever puts their hands up, do they? But, but we know it's true. Because you see, if you're going to have an affair, it's always with somebody close to home. It's always that way. You're always doing it with somebody close to home. So I'm saying we can find out about all these things. So God help you if you're having an affair with the next hour. Because we'll be able to tell everybody that you're having an affair. My dear, you're not having an affair. But you do need some more fun in your life. The lady behind you with a beautiful scarf on. No, no. The lady behind with a beautiful scarf on. There, very much yeah. Okay. The lady there in black. Because it's telling me here that this man who is very much like a father, I'm coming, wait two minutes. This man, very much like a father, is coming there, standing by your side. This love life's going to be better, as I said to you just now. Love yourself a lot more. It's going to be alright. I've got to go. There's a thousand and one people want to talk to me. Take our love and I'll say, God bless you. There's a gentleman there. I think it's a blue top you've got on. You might call it purple. You just look to me and you're sat next to that lady in the brown coat. You, sir. Just put up your hand and we'll know I'm with you. You? Yes? Good man. Don't forget, you can tell me to shut up whenever you want to because you are the last person who thought, shit, 
He ain't coming nowhere near me for a reason. You, you're not having an affair. I can promise you that. My grandfather's you is this. There's a lady across the other side of life who's telling me that you are working far too much. It's all work and no play. Because you're hiding your emotions away a lot of the time, you find it very hard to express yourself. But please tell me you've got two children now, or there's two children to do with your life at the moment, sir. <laughs> She asks, Who, who's got the, you've got two children very much around you now. Where's the two children, sir? Uh, my uncle, uh, He's an uncle. I'll do nicely. Because I'm saying that two children is very close. But I have to say to you, there's a child, don't worry about your little one running around. Don't okay. worry about it at all. Let them play, let them make as much noise as they want. My God, do you know, I was kicked out of my home at the age of 13 years old for talking to dead people. And I went and lived on the streets at 13 years old. My father kicked me out of my house, because he was a very Christian man, for talking to dead people at the age of 13 years old. When my father had his funeral, do you know what he had? A spiritual funeral. Everybody learns at the end of the day that there's life after death. You can be a Christian, you can be a Muslim, you can be whatever you want to be. But it took my father 72 years to believe there's life after death. And he had a medium doing his funeral, and it's what we call a spiritual funeral. So he learns at the end. So, my goodness me, children are the most important thing in this world. If you have children in your house, and the children of Norway, and you need to listen to this young man, because if you're saying that you're not spiritual, my name ain't Phil Phillips, and I'll tell you why in two minutes. The children of Norway are becoming so sensitive and so psychic, it's unbelievable. And a lot of people are thinking, my God, what do we do with the children? If you're living in the Oslo area, I'm in Oslo once a month. The next time I'm here is the 12th and 13th of December. So I'm at a place called the Unity Centre. If you get stuck with your child, who's a very spiritual person and you don't know what to do, bring them to me. And I'll try and explain as much. Oh, hang on a minute, you're wanting money. I know what this is. No. Children are free. And the reason my children are free is the story I've just told you. Don't ever let a child suffer through the spiritual side of life. If you don't understand what's going on, come to me and I'll try and help you, or go and see another medium. I don't care, there's hundreds of them. There's not just me, there's thousands of us out there. But as you can see, I'm a firm believer of this child thing. It's just amazing, the children today. And young man, there's children. You've just told me that you haven't got any children. I'm going to bet you 500 crone that there's children coming into your life. There's a pregnancy, but you'll be pleased to know that you're not going to have a baby. So there's a partner going to be having a baby here and show me here. So I'm saying to you there's children famous coming into your life, but I know you're an uncle. There's something to do with these two children around you now. Because this lady's talking about these two children and saying, tell him, I'm looking after the two children and she's trying to sort out your work. You should be adding something new to your work now. She's talking about all this newness to do with work and there has to be some changes now. But although you're looking at me straight faced, I hate to tell you this, the lady next to you knows exactly what the hell I'm talking about because she's thinking, oh my God, he's got to change you around and you do have to change. But you're a typical man who's saying, yeah, go on then, prove it to me. All men are the same. It's all okay because it's the men who don't believe. And I'm not here to believe in anything. What I'm trying to tell you is this. You can see spirit people. You are very sensitive. You're twice as big as me and twice as thick in the shoulders as me. But the problem is, is your sensitivity. 
you have to become, become more aware of this sensitive side of you. Because everybody's coming to see you with all your... I can see something. Everybody's coming to see you with all their problems now. So you're a very good coach counsellor at the moment. And this spirit work is going to become stronger and stronger with you. And as I said just now, you should be working for yourself. There's something new adding on to your work, and you're either doing it or you're talking about it right now. So it's showing here you're going to be okay. Before I come to you, and you know I'm coming to you here, the lady in black standing with the man, you're getting hotter and hotter, and the healing that's coming to you is amazing. Before I come to you, just hang on one moment. <coughs> Has anybody ever seen me working before? Has anybody beat one, two, three, four? My God, loads of you stop. What do you come back for? <laughs> <laughs> what do you come back for? Okay. I've got to make an apology. I've got to make an apology for the people who see me working before. One of my things I've always said in all my talks, English man, and she knows it as well, Venka knows it very much as well, you know, she's come all the way from some strange little place in the middle of nowhere just to see us. Where do you live? Copac. I've heard of it. That's a strange little place, Copac. Venka knows it as well. I've always said English men and Norwegian women never work. Ladies, if you ever find an English man, forget it. It will never work. We're completely different. But I've got to make an apology. I'm in love. <laughs> With a Norwegian woman. And she's standing just over there in white. So if you want to know anything about my schools, or anything about what I do, or anything about what's going on this weekend, and you can't speak much English, or you're scared to speak English, speak to Chris when we finish, and she'll tell you all about it. So there's Chris over there, she'll tell you all about it. There's Colky down here, and Colky's got a stand here. He's a monk. Colky's a monk, and he'll do a lot of meditations, and he is in Oslo. So if you're looking at doing meditation and you can't find anywhere, come and grab Colky afterwards, and he'll sort out. It's really strange. He's in white and she's in white. What's this spiritual thing going on with everybody in white today, eh? My dear. This healing that's going on with you. Now the man here 
has got a very creative side to it. And you've got this colourful side of you here. So that you could bring out this inspiration and he could bring out this creative side. You're both wasting your time. And it's showing here you should be doing this thing together. And I'm holding it up and just allowing it to explode. You don't necessarily have to do this as a full-time job to start with. But this is what you enjoy doing. You both enjoy being outside and being creative. And I'm saying you both need to bring out this creative side. Young man, you didn't know your father's side of the family very well at all, did you? No. He keeps on saying, this man that I got here, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I'm not going to go into this in a public demonstration, but he's realised since he's passed how much he should have loved you. But you're very good at working with your hands. But you cannot work 29 <coughs> hours a day. There's only 24 hours in a day. You can't keep this going on. And the reason why you're doing this is you're very good at shutting yourself off. Stop it. You're as bad as her. So when there's an argument going on, it's like World War III. Yeah. So you're obviously having <coughs> arguing though, because you're meant to be together, but I don't know what's going on here. You found a good soulmate, but you're either having amazing days or absolute crap days. <laughs> And it's showing here, we've got to get this balance between the two of you here. It hasn't been an easy start for you both, but it's like you've known each other all of this life. So you should be married. You should be doing all this stuff it's showing here. So for God's sake, get up and enjoy it. And you will be okay. Don't blame me. <laughs> but it is a lovely link. It's a wonderful bond between the two of you. And you should be enjoying it. Take our love and take our blessing, and I'll say God bless you. Anybody got any questions for me? Anybody want to ask me anything? I only say that because I want to drink some water, and I know nobody's going to ask me. They never do. Nobody ever asks. <coughs> I'm coming back to the clairvoyance in two minutes, but one question that usually I get asked, and as I said, I've passed, I've died twice in this life. Once when I was 21 years old, when I was in a coma for two and a half months, and then again this year. So they call me the cat. Hopefully I've got nine lives. Hopefully the third one I'm not going to pass on. But I know for sure one thing that's going to happen to you when you pass across the other side of life. And if you've heard me say this before, you know why. It just reassures these ladies. Ladies. You are going to meet everybody that you meet here on the earth world, you're going to meet them again. What I'm trying to say to you is if you have five husbands, you will meet your five husbands again. That's all about your karma. That's what that's all about. So what happens when you die? When you die, there's this thing called your aura, which is your energy field around you. I call it the CD, because it collects everything that you've done on this earth world. Everything. Good, bad, and indifferent. And so when you die, you are shown your CD. <coughs> And you decide on what level of consciousness you're going to be going on to. So ladies, you won't have to stay with all five husbands. You might stay with one, but you won't have to stay with them all. And then what you don't learn here, you'll learn across the other side of life. Because once you've actually seen all your life and you've decided on where you're going to be, then you're going to meet everybody that you've met here. So yes, at the end of the day, 
I will have to meet my father again and sort this issue out. Because if you don't sort issues out on the earth world, they'll have to be sorted out in the spirit world. So, you don't get away with nothing. It's a thing called karma. And that's why I try and say to everybody, try and be as nice as you can. You're not meant to love everybody. But there's a lesson in all this process of life that we're going through. So, if you call this a school, and this is a learning lesson, everything that you're doing today, let's just say today, is the worst day of your life. If you call this a lesson and move forward, then you've learned your lesson. Or are you one of these people who's just going round and around and around, not learning and going through the same mistakes all the time? You haven't learned your lesson. So don't go through the same mistake. Enjoy life, be happy, and know you've got to move forward. My dear, can I come and speak to you? Just as you're falling asleep then, I begin to come and speak to you. You don't have to answer me, but how old are you? Okay. I thought you were 16, and that's not being rude to you. And I was just about to ask the lady next to you, can I come and talk to you? Because I'm not allowed to talk to anybody who's under 18 without their parents' permission. But anyway, you're 26, so it must be the oil of you lay or something beautiful that you're wearing. But don't blame me if you go to the bar tonight and get asked for ID and blame the Englishman. Because I tell you, you're more than likely going to be getting ID tonight if you go out drinking. But what I want to tell you is this. There's, you're too young to lose your father, but there's a man stood next to you, and you saw me looking at you three times just now. And that's because I keep on seeing this man standing next to you who says, quick, go and talk to her, go and talk to her, go and tell her she will be fine. And you need to know that you're going to be fine. You're looking very well. Do you know what he said to me? Phil, if you don't make three people cry today, you ain't going to get no Bacardi. And there's two people crying already, so maybe you will be buying me my Bacardi. Honestly, sweetheart, you are not at the end of the road. I just told you just now, if you call this, and I wondered why I was saying it, because I say everything for a reason. I do laugh and joke with my work, but at the same time, it's very serious with my work. And you have to bring that laughter in, otherwise you're just going crazy doing this job. Because there's so much emotions with this. And I wondered why I was saying that this is a school of learning. That was part of your message. You have to try and let it go and start again. <clears throat> I know you didn't say goodbye to this man before he passed the cross. I can't even look at you before he passed across the other side of life. But he's telling me there's no need to say goodbye to him. He will always be there by your side. And his hand was twice as big as Phil's. So that tells me that this man was a strong man whilst he was here. And he's trying to give you the strength, but I had to come and talk to this lady sat next to you. That's why he brought this connection in, that I had to bring her into your life. You are both going to be okay. But it's no good looking at photographs and talking with him and not waiting for an answer. You're talking and talking and talking and there's nothing coming back. Light the candle. Let him know that you're there. And he's worried about your health. You look very well to me, but that's not what he's telling me. You are dead inside. And he don't want you to be like this. He wants you to be happy. Your whole life, 
has stopped. And he, he wants you to move it forward, knowing that he's there. You can't tell me you feel somebody playing with your face at night time. You can't tell me that your lights don't blinker in your house. You can't tell me the electricity is going strange in your bloody house. I'm not surprised. Boys and girls, you imagine if you're dead and you're trying to talk to somebody on this life and they ain't listening to you, you're going to get pissed off. <laughs> and he's doing the same. You are listening to him. He is talking with you and he does love you. And you knew that, well, he was a very loving man whilst he was here. But I know it sounds awful, but he had to go. He had no choice. Bang! And he'd gone that quick. And he said, I tell you, it's the best way of going. There's no suffering with me. So he's coming up with his humour now. He's coming up with his laughter. And that's what he wants you to remember him by. But there's still lots of things, excuse me. There's still lots of things to sort out, he's telling me here. There's still lots of things to move forward. And it shows me here, a lot of his things haven't got rid of. It's all still here. Why? It's entirely up to you. We can't tell you to get rid of nothing. But he said, it's just a hanging on thing. The memories are amazing. But he don't want you to hang on. He wants you to move forward. And you're as bad as bloody one another. I don't know why he's talking about the Christmas time. Obviously the Christmas time is crap. But there must have been something happening around the Christmas time. He must have passed or something around the Christmas time also. Because he puts up the Christmas decorations and then all of a sudden all the Christmas decorations are messed up. He wants you to have a good Christmas, knowing he will be there. Not he might be there, he will be there looking after you. And there's three of you that he's looking after. There's three of you that he's looking after. Where's your man? He keeps on showing me a man taller than me. So if I come here, if you're saying you're single, this man who's giving you all this other proof is true. Is also true about this bit. So don't you dare try telling me you're single. Yeah. I thought so. <laughs> I said, come on now. This is enough. Let's go on to the love life and have a bit of fun with this now. Okay. You're saying you're single. Uncle Phil saying you're not. So remember, remember what I'm telling you, but she's going to forget. There's a man taller than me. So I want to go this height, okay? Who you know, who you should be with. And it's like you and him have had a connection before, and he's standing behind you. How can I see living people? Don't ask me that bit, because I don't know. But I can see living people as well as dead people. And there's a man stood behind you who wants to be with you. But for some reason, you're wanting to be sad. And this is the point. You don't need to be sad. You need to be proud and happy that you have a guardian angel. And when you have these two children, don't blame Uncle Phil. And to have two children, you need a man. So I hate to tell you this. You're going to say, that stupid English man told me this is going to happen when it all happens. So there is some more fun. It's not the end. It's just a new beginning. It feels like he's only just passed this man who's gone across the side. But I know he hasn't. I want to say two or even three years ago. Because he talks about the Christmas time here very much today. And he'll always be with you. He'll always move you forward there very much today. It says, who is this? Is this mum? Because it don't look like mum at all. Who is this lady to do with you? My God, you don't look alive, do you? Never mind. <laughs> is there painting going on in your house now? Are you decorating? Are you painting? 
make sure you do it properly, because he's watching over you. <laughs> Don't ask me, ask her. I haven't got a bloody clue how to paint. She does the painting, not me. I'm crap at doing all this sort of thing. I'd rather talk to a dead person than paint the house. That's, I told you early on, it's the easiest thing to do is talk to a dead person. Paint in the house, my God. But he's watching you. And have you just put on, it's not an extension. Have you just put on a bit into your house? Have you just built something onto your house? No. There's an extension coming onto your house. There's something new happening with the house. And you will be working from home. He's telling me here, you need to look after your health. You need to start all this again. And you will be working from home. So it seems to me you're as bad as her. We both stopped. And it's time to start all over again. And he'll be there playing the push people. Have you both got the same photograph, which is a very, very big photograph? Have you blown up a photograph of this man who's passed across the other side? You haven't. Yes, you to your house, can I turn left, and you listen up because I might be in your house, but I'll find out whose house in a minute. Can I turn left and go into one room, and I, can I turn left and go into a very large room? Yes? Maybe. Do you know where you live? Swing to Venstra. See? Ah, see? You didn't know that I knew Norwegian, did you? Ah, see? Swing to Venstra, and you're in a little room. Swing to... See? We're learning. You all said it together. See? At the beginning of the session, you wouldn't talk to me. Now you're there. Yeah? Then you turn right, and you're in this bigger room. Yes? And then straight ahead of you here, there's something happening. Is this your kitchen? I'm going to find your bedroom in a minute. God help you. I'm going to see you in bed tonight. Because <laughs> it keeps on saying here that he walks around your house. I thought so. There's something happening in your kitchen. And he's there very much in the kitchen area. So you need to do some cooking for him. He's obviously getting a bit hungry or something. He's got a lovely sense of humor, this man has. And he's very much around your house, very much looking after you there. But where's the three children? She can't be the only one. You've got another one, which is two, and I want three. But don't worry, you're not going to be pregnant again. So, <laughs> have you lost one? Have you had a miscarriage or something like that? Because he's telling me he's looking after all three children. That's right, because he talks about the third child as well. He's got the third, and I hate to tell you this, your third one will be coming back through her. So if she ever has a baby, and I'm saying she is going to be having, that child you'll know will be your child. So there's this huge connection with the family here, very much other. So I'm saying you will be okay. But for God's sake, do some more studying. Do some more training. You've got a very good head on your shoulders. I'm coming now, wait. You've got a very good head on your shoulders and you're not doing enough with it. Good luck. Take our love, and I'll say God bless you. What's going on here? The lady with the orange top on and the black card. Hello, Can you speak much English, my dear? Because they've told me to go very slowly with you. There's a lady who was in... Oh, there's a wheelchair there. That's strange. There's a lady who was in a wheelchair before she passed over, before she died. Do you know a lady who was in a wheelchair before she died? That's a no. You don't, do you? 
Okay, have you just been to a funeral in the last... No, you haven't. Have you just been to a funeral in the last two weeks? No. Stay there a moment. Yeah. Who's just been... Put your hand up. If you've been to a funeral in the last two <coughs> or three weeks? <coughs> oh, that's why I didn't see you. Oh, and a man here. Stay there just a moment, yeah. I'm coming back to you. Do you know a lady who was in a wheelchair before she went over? Stay there. Do you know a lady in a wheelchair before she went over? Yeah. Ah. Ah. Orange. You will do nicely. That's very rude of me, isn't it? Was she on your mother's side of the family, this lady in the wheelchair? The lady in the back. You just look round with your hand up to your back. Yes. Young man, was she in a wheelchair before she went over the other side of life? I don't know if she was in a wheelchair because I didn't see her in hospital. Okay, stay there, young man. What, what's happening here is, you saw me just look at my watch and I was thinking, this is the last one. And I could see what's happening. Everybody's like, hey, hang on a minute. I want to come and talk to you here. And that's why I literally got lost with this message. Because I'm seeing too many dead people. It's as simple as that. So, let me tell you the message. And then I believe I'm with the gentleman here. But you can all work it out and do whatever you want to. Young man, you haven't just been to a funeral though, have you? No, I didn't think so. That's where she's getting mixed up. She says, he hasn't just been to a funeral. But it feels like you have. You are missing somebody who's passed across the other side of life and there's not a day goes by that your head isn't spinning. Leave the lady alone in the wheelchair. There's a lot of dead people around you and you need to know that they're there guiding you. Because you've got this scientific mind. And you do too much thinking. And that's why you put your head in the clouds all the time. It's easier to stay there than it is to say, where the heck's going on? What's going on next? And that's why you keep yourself busy all the time. And this lady is worried about you. I'm going to say to you, religion doesn't matter. You can be what religion you want to be. I really don't care. But there's a very Christian-based side of you. You've been brought up what I call the proper way. And this lady is so proud how you're looking after other people's children. You are looking after so many, you might as well have made a home here or a hotel and just given everything away. Because the more money you're earning at the financial side, the economy side, isn't bad at all. But the more money you're earning, the more money you're giving away. And that's why I'm saying you should have been a charity fund here. And this lady so proud of who you are and what you've done. And you've made it comfortable for everybody else. I'm not saying that you're unhappy. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is, you have to start looking after your own happiness. And you've been told this, and this poor lady next to you is nodding and nodding and nodding. And so you bloody tell him. He needs to know this from a stupid Englishman. <laughs> so, it wouldn't surprise me if she's been telling you all this. And so therefore, all you have to do is come within. I'm going to call it meditation. You might not call it that. I don't care what you call it. But you need to go within and know that you are being looked after. But it's time now to go across the water. So I don't want you just to be in, well, let's just say Norway. I don't even know where I am, but let's just say Norway. I don't want you just to be in Norway. 
I want some travelling for you. And you've been talking about this travelling, and you have, don't you cry as well, because otherwise I'll get my Bacardi. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do this travelling, and they're saying to me here, you've got to go and do it. It's time to let go, and to do this travelling, and to go where you want them. I'll tell you not, you're not going to Spain. You'll go to some very strange countries, what I would say are strange countries. But you will get a lot of achievement by going to these countries and being happy there. They love you dearly. Take our love, take our blessings, and I'll say God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here today, but unfortunately I'm completely full. As I've just said, I'm back in Norway. There are, or there's going to be now, some, uh, what do you call it, Norwegian? It's pieces of paper that you can put out your telephone number. And if you want to put your telephone number on these pieces of paper, um, I shall SMS you when I'm coming back on the 12th and 13th, and then you can just um, let me know if you want a reading. As you can see, you've all got a piece of paper about the school. Just very quickly, I won't keep you two more minutes. The school that I'm doing in Oslo is all about mediumship and passing around, you can put around the back but please. And there's pens here if you wanted a pen. Chris, can you come and get this one? The school in Oslo that I'm doing is all about mediumship, healing, animal healing, guides, helpers, and everything else. It's 10 hours a month for one year. 1,000 a month. If you wanted to know any more, stop with us afterwards and I'll tell you all about it. If I can help you, then please come and see me in any way. But for now, take our love and I'll say God bless you all. Thank you very much. <laughs>